Hello everyone and welcome to Discover Labyrinths with Lars Hallett. Today we are going to look at the Ariadne's thread or the journey of the seven circuit classical labyrinth design. Now typically when we draw labyrinths we draw the lines that define the pathway by walking in between them. So the pathway is the empty space and the lines show you what to walk between to have your labyrinth experience. But you actually don't need the traditional labyrinth design to have the journey or experience. You can simply walk or trace or draw the labyrinth journey without the lines defining it on either side. And this is called the Ariadne's thread or the pathway through the labyrinth based on the myth of Theseus and the Minotaur where Ariadne gave Theseus the thread to find his way through the maze. So in this case, you are simply seeing the journey of the labyrinth um, without the defining design itself. And you need to learn this through practice. It takes doing it over and over until it becomes something that you can do without thinking about. Because just like all labyrinth walks, you don't want to um, think too much logically about it. You want to feel it and um, allow your journey to come through you instead of um, over analyzing it as you go. So the trick to doing this is that you begin with an empty space and either drawing or in the snow, you know, walking out into a snowy field, you want to go out um, into the third circuit of your design. So you are passing two circuits that are invisible and you are turning left, going up and around, coming around to form a circle, then turn outward, and you want to leave space here because you're going to come back around. So you want to turn outward and then follow the circle that you created, turn outward again, and go up and over and then come all the way back around and into the center. Now you've actually completed a three circuit classical labyrinth at this point, but to continue, you want to follow this 180 degree turn around and you are creating a second wider 180 degree turn around that turn. You are going up and around, this is the connecting loop for your next three circuit labyrinth, which goes up and over an invisible center, out, out, around, and in. And that is your second three circuit classical walk that three plus one connector plus three equals a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven circuit classical labyrinth. Now, this simply takes practice of doing it over and over again, and then you can do it without thinking about it. In, three, out, 
out. And around. I'm going to draw this in a different color so you can see. This would be the connecting path. Then the inside up, over, out, out, and around. And now you see the outer three-circuit classical, the inner three-circuit classical, and the connecting loop in green between them. So because the classical labyrinth is made of two meanders, um, this shows how you can uh, walk those two meanders in space to create the classical labyrinth design. So studying the Ariadne thread is a really interesting way to understand labyrinths on a deeper level. Um, because the labyrinth, as I said, is made of two meanders. And traditionally, a meander is something that you might see in Greek or Roman um, design or architecture, where a line you know, approaches its destination then goes further away, it approaches its destination, goes further away. And what's fascinating is that the Seven Circuit Classical Labyrinth is actually two meanders that are wrapped around a center in a circle to create the seven circuit classical design. So this um, disc that I got from my mentor, Robert Ferre, really illustrates how you take two Roman meanders, um, wrap them around, and create the seven circuit classical labyrinth. Now, as I said, this is something that's useful when creating a snow labyrinth or um, a uh, labyrinth where you are raking leaves um, to form the design. But you can even create a canvas labyrinth that um, utilizes this technique because it fits a larger labyrinth into a smaller space because you are walking on the line and um, therefore have actually two pathways on either side that become your path. So you are using each space twice instead of once. So for instance, I wanted to fit a seven circuit classical labyrinth onto a 12 foot piece of canvas. You can do that with a seven inch space and two inch line. Now if this was a traditional labyrinth where you were walking between the lines, walking on a seven inch pathway would be very tight. But by walking on the line, you have two seven inch pathways on either side that then become seven plus two plus seven equals 16 inch pathway. So that becomes a very comfortable uh, walk in actually a smaller space. Now it wouldn't be good for large groups because you would be, you know, you're sharing your pathway with the next outer line, but it becomes a great way to make a small personal seven circuit classical labyrinth. Now the other thing I wanted to show you was when I have done uh, mowing labyrinths, in the grass, what I do is I draw the Ariadne thread for the lawnmower and then spray paint the line in the grass of where the center of the pathway should be. And then you simply mow over the line, centering the lawnmower on the line and create a mode classical labyrinth as this was done 
um, at the Sonoma Mountain Village in Santa Rosa, California. So um, by doing this, you will mow up the spray paint that you did for the pathway. Whereas if you had spray painted on either side and then run the lawnmower between the lines, then the spray paint would still show on either side of the lawn mowing. So this way you mow up your guide and it doesn't show when you are finished. So give it some practice. It takes time and uh, you'll get a hang of it into your body. Um, the last thing to note is that this is a left-handed classical labyrinth and you can also go the other direction and make it a right-handed classical labyrinth. So the way to do that would be to go in, turn right, go up and over, up and over, up and over, and around, and then go in, up, over, and around the other way to create the right-handed classical Ariadne thread. So I hope you found this interesting. It began simple and went deep, but that way I hope there's something for everybody to think about in learning your pathway for the Ariadne thread. Please subscribe to my channel and give this video a like if you enjoyed it and learned something from it. And uh, find me online at discoverlabyrinths.com.